Okay. Now, with your soldering iron, you need about 30 watt iron. It does get hot, so be prepared to have warm fingertips. Or you can wear some type of gloves. I'm wearing like plastic little gloves just to keep the cells nice and clean. You will need a file for once in a while. Your tip will dull down. And if you can hold the file down and just go around that with the edge where you really have your point. After you rehab your point, let me kind of prop this here. You can see. Then, after you refile, we go over the tip a little bit with solder. That'll help keep it on there. But before you can start soldering your cells, you have to go over the, the white parts with the flux pin. Now, I am soldering on top of little pieces of pegboard just because it will keep the solar cells from sticking to the table. Without it, you can see lines because the clear coat I have on my workbench, it'll try to stick to it. Put your flux pin, give it a little dab for it to start to flow. And then just start at the back towards the front. If I can get my finger out of the way. And just go up and down each cell like that. I will do the rest of those here in a moment. Let me, the tabbing wire. Uh, I have a couple different types. One I got from ML Solar, which also have got these cells from. They're 4.6 watt uh, cells. Uh, the tabbing wire I got this here spool for was the 3 by 6 cells, which is a little bit smaller, but with the 6 by 6 cells, I like the 2 millimeter thick wideness ones. As you can see, they're just a tiny bit thicker, and they seem to work better. At least, whenever you solder them on, it does. Out of the stack of 100, so far, only found one broken one. I want to see, contact him, see if I can get that replaced, or I might be able to fix it if it won't be too much of a voltage drop. Just, just tab the place it back together, and then tab it across, and see if there's much of a drop. If there's not too much of a drop, I just might keep it, but I, I'll contact him first before I try to fix that. I guess whenever you order your cells, you should probably go through and check them all. Uh, I prefer to use gloves so that way you don't have fingerprints on them. Uh, I got this here stack of 100 cells, uh, 4.6 watts for 200 bucks off of his eBay site. I also post his link for his website as well. And many other parts you can get off eBay. Also like the bus, t bus wire you'll need as well, which you use that to connect the cells together across the bottom wise and to bridge the two cells parts together as you see here. But I'll explain more about that later. Let me go ahead and put some more flux down these other ones here real quick. And then we'll see about if I can get it to focus for doing the soldering. With excess resin, you clean up very easily with a little bit of paper towel and just a smidget of Windex. Spray it on the paper towel first. Alright, now I got to throw that on there. Not very good at soldering with one hand, but I'll give it a try for you.
because my one-handed coordination is sucky, I will use a prop for the camera, hopefully. Hopefully you'll be able to see it right that way. I line it up at the bottom. Position it straight. Hold it gently on the bottom. You never want to put too much pressure. You let the heat do the work. As it heats up, oh darn. I might have to try to edit that part out. If you can see as the solder, you can see the solder melting and bonding to the top of the cell as you go along. And you never want to keep it in the same spot too long. If you're on a spot for a few seconds and the solder is not melting, you could have corrosion on your tip of your iron and might have to clean that off or turn it to a side. You can tell if it's will solder easily by putting a little tab, drop a solder and see if it melts fine on the tip. See, it doesn't melt too easy there on the side, but towards the tip. See there, it's not melting too well, but this side, that side has a good connection. Go ahead, go for another one here. Line up at the bottom. And nice and straight. This hair process is probably what takes the longest. Some people have a little bit shorter wires that only come out like an inch long. Those work as well, but I like to go all the way down. Just in case if the cell breaks, it will still have a good connection or anything else like that. Especially with 6x6 six six cells where they'll be having about 8 amps going through it. You want electricity to be able to flow easily. To 1.5 millimeter solder that I'm not using, sometimes you have to put a little bit extra solder. But with the 2 millimeter, it usually has plenty. And that's how you solder up a cell. Finished product. 
Oh, and let me show you. If you mess up a cell, if you start to go crooked, you do not have to throw the whole cell away. To desolder a cell, it is easier than you might think. Let me put a little weight to hold this cell part here down. You just pick on the wire. Like say this hair part was crooked, you can reheat it up and slowly peel it back as you heat it up. That way you can relay it flat and straight again. Then we go back over it. But if you long as you do it right the first time, you won't have to re-go over it. But sometimes things get crooked. It happens. See, I was a little crooked there. It's not really too bad. Thinking about redoing it, but I'll just smear the solder around a little bit more on the white part. Oh, camera's looking at the wrong ones.